Well, that's pretty you awesome. Know. That's a whole touch screen. Yeah, a whole screen. Yeah. It's a giant smart board. That's awesome. It's a, it's a cool tool. Hi, Gary. Um, welcome to this month. Gosh, months. This is the October, October 20th, 3rd Thursday. And um, with us today is Janine from UAF's eLearning, and she's going to be talking about voice threads. So I'll let Janine take it away. Sounds good. Um, I'm actually going to share some slides inside of here and then minimize this again. A uh, couple of things to talk to you about. We might have a couple of people showing up. Well, I hope we have people showing up. There's pizza and great conversation. Good information. Could make it difficult if there's no conversation, Gary, for the discussion parts. Uh, I will have to fill it. Ah, oh, craziness. Okay. So today, Janine McMahon and Naomi Hagland, is that how you say her last name? That is how you say it. We'll um, be covering a few things on VoiceThread, and Naomi should be here around 12.30. We've got a schedule, and this is what we're going to cover. I actually set it up for a chat at first, because I always figure that it takes people a little while to get here. So we might see a few people walk through the door, but we're going to get started a few minutes sure. early. Um, so I used gonna, voice thread yeah. long, long time ago, actually when it first appeared on the, How on long the scene. Ago? Um, long enough that it was the main method of using voice thread was by telephone. Oh, you could call mm -hmm. you could call in mm -hmm. your voice thread connection and leave a an audio message. And you can still it. do that. Yeah. In fact, I think it's kind of one of the neat aspects. It's a little retro, but students for, can. For a lot of people, that's the only tool they have, right? That's right. So so they can comment. They can participate. That's right. Um, it's pretty cool, I think. Low, low tech for you know, what works for lots of folks. So. That's right. And uh, if you want people to participate and build community, then it really doesn't matter what particular tool Absolutely. they're using, just so long as they're able to participate, um, communicate with others. We're going to cover just a few things on using VoiceThread basics and some new modifications. Uh, I started using VoiceThread probably four or five years ago as a student. and since I began using it, there's some new things, cool things going on with it. So if there's people that are just not all that familiar with VoiceThread, or if they're thinking about what they used several years ago, I'm going to encourage them to take another look because things are Absolutely. changing. They have changed. And then um, a little bit about using VoiceThread assessments. And then uh, Naomi's going to cover using the VoiceThread mashup tools inside a blackboard mm -hmm. and we are going to have discussion and what's coming because they're releasing new things this month and then they've got a couple oh, of awesome. new things coming out next month too so that's pretty cool or it might not be next month but it's soon coming up coming later this quarter that's all right right um so basically if you're not familiar with what voice thread is it's a tool that's going to allow you to integrate graphics, slides, text, voice, video, all in one space. And its main strength is the ability for you as the instructor or you as the student to also provide commentary and feedback. It's threaded. So it's voice, but then it's also discussion based. So there's a many different ways that you can interact with others. Um, please don't use this just to lecture. Certainly you can use this product uh, to make small lecturettes, but then um, to get the strength out of it, you want to encourage your students to ask questions, to make their own comments. So if you're going to use it to lecture, also seed it with strong discussion questions. And you can see whether or not your students are picking up on either the reading or your lecture items. But at its core, it's really a collaborative learning tool. 100%. So, I mean, I start off with best practices. Don't use this to lecture. Um, use it to ask deeper questions. Get students involved with you and involved with the content. And then... Um, I would require students, if you're going to create either assessments with this or if you're just going to use it for discussion, require your students to use either video or voice. And that is, the reason why I'm going to say that, 
although we opened up with you can call with the telephone, right? Yep. Yeah. Is in our online environment, we've got so many students that just feel disconnected. So if they could see videos of other students, if they could hear their voice, I think it allows them to connect more with their fellow oh, students. Um, and actually, you using your voice as the instructor, you using video as the instructor, you're going to let your students know who you are. Mm -hmm. So that's another strength too. Um, but you know, if students uh, start talking about bandwidth and, and issues that they might have, or they're not available, they don't have access to their computer, uh, most people have smartphones, and even if you don't have a smartphone, you can still call in. That's right. If you've got an old dumb phone, you can still do it. And and I do. I love that. Um, that's actually like my next slide. So the fact that we opened up with that, that was awesome. Because I do hear from students, I can't do that where I'm at. And by the way, where I'm at could be Birch Hill here in Fairfax. Yeah. It, it's not rural communities necessarily. My bandwidth is so slow. It could be anywhere. Um, but if you're using VoiceThread, it's not really an issue. You're still going to need to keep your slides down to a minimum, maybe not drop in too much extra video um, in terms of considerations for bandwidth. Right. But wherever your students are, they can use their phones, they can use an app on their tablet, they can use their laptop or desktop machine. And I've got um, a screenshot here, and these are the symbols. If a person just wants to leave a text response, they would click the ABC. If they have to call in with their phone, <laughs> they're going to click on that um, and, you know, then read the response. Oh, sure. Oh, and it really gets, oh, that's nice. That's great. And then, of course, just audio recordings, audio commentary. That's this middle one. But if a student has a webcam connected to their laptop, their desktop machine, or if they're using um, their iPhone, they could, in fact, do a little video shoot um, and then, of course, some uploads. So your students really, it's a rich environment for them to interact with you. So a um, couple of different ways. When Naomi's here, she's going to be talking about some Blackboard specific elements. But for you using VoiceThread, um, logging in, most of you might have a free account already, faculty and students. Well, we have a institutional account. And so there's, there's an importance. I'm going to talk about that a little different, the differences between those. Um, and we're also going to talk about how to create a voice thread. I just, uh, just advanced. So they, they need an account, whether it's a free account or using the institutional account. Right. They're going to need an account. I actually had advanced without even realizing it. I skipped a slide. I'm going to move that slide down here, <laughs> but talk about this part first. Um, so some of the things I want to show you is um, creating a voice thread. And if you're either listening to this or watching this or both, you can use these materials in your go ahead and copy and paste or grab the slides to use inside of your class if you're going to have your students create voice threads. Um, so they're going to need to create their own voice threads. You can do that for um, a lot of different assessments, and we're going to talk about assessments. So there might be many reasons why you would have your students do it. Um, but another strength, before I show you how this works, is that you get email notifications whenever anybody responds or comments or adds to your voice thread. Now, you're familiar with that because you've been using this. Yep. Um, so students, excuse me, faculty that don't already know about it might not be aware that it's kind of cool whenever your students are interacting, doing their assessments, their assignments, to any voice thread you've created. You're the owner. You're going to get notifications. That helps keep you on track. If the students, if you have them in their assessments make voice threads, they're going to get the notifications. And that will help inspire them and let them know, you know that other people are participating. And of course, um, if you've got a whole bunch of students 
you may want to change this up. I know that uh, Josh Lubnick is using this in two of his classes. And uh, when you get lots and lots of students, you're going to get lots and lots of emails. So maybe you want something at the end of the day instead of every single time somebody comments. But I think it's a great place to start. OK, so if you don't have an account already, then if you're a student, follow the voice thread link that your instructor has provided inside of Blackboard. And the reason for that is it will prompt you to create an account and you will automatically then have an account which is in advance of the free one. It's going to be connected to the UAF um, e-learning uh, product uh, service with VoiceThread that allows this basic account allows you to create 50 VoiceThreads. If you have a free account, you can create five VoiceThreads. So that's that's from the instructor perspective or the student? Both. Okay. Both. Um, and that's an important question. Sometimes instructors have already, they've created their account and right. um, they may have paid to be able to make more. Well, if they put um, any of their voice threads into Blackboard, if they go through Blackboard through the LTI link that Na Naomi is going to show people how to use, um, then they've connected their free account to the institutional one. So if you're listening, if you're watching this and you haven't already done this, don't pay for extra. <laughs> so then the question is, if I am an instructor, how do I get the instructor account? The instructor account. Right. The inst access to the institutional one as the instructor. As soon as inside of your Blackboard, you could follow. Um, so let's let's go there. Um, inside of your Blackboard shell, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my Blackboard shell. I'm actually gonna use one from this last summer. You're gonna log in to Blackboard and find your class that you wanna work with. Right. And, oh, I'm already logged into VoiceThread, so I'm going to have to log out, in fact, to show you that. Um, or I can show you what it looks like, and then you'd have to create your own. Okay. I'm going to go to a specific area in my class, and then under Build Content, if I choose ah, there we go. VoiceThread okay. from the mashups, then it's going to ask you just, like inside of Blackboard, to do a few steps. Um, and this automatically creates? It sends you, what it does is it creates a connection. So just with Blackboard, whenever you make an item, it shows up at the bottom. Now, when you follow that item, then it takes you, it launches the LTI link. And I said, I'm already logged in. So let me see if I can log out of Blackboard, because not Blackboard. The first time you go in, it asks you to log in. Well, that's okay. Naomi will probably go over that. So. Okay. Um, but if you, so if you've never created an account, you know, because I just want to make sure to touch on it regardless of what Naomi right. covers. If you've never created an account, you're going to be prompted to make an account and you'll be tied okay. to So what if I don't one. use Blackboard though and I want to use VoiceThread? Um, well, I'm not sure how to connect it to ours so that you have more, but we certainly, we have, oh, yes, yes, yes. I know, well, you can contact me. Ah. You can contact me. <laughs> uh, you can contact me. You can talk, contact Kristen Buffard, um, also an instructional designer, because we can create you an okay. account. I was going to say, because attached. there are yes. times when I don't want to use Blackboard, I just right. want the you want to thread. create voice thread right. and you want more than the five free ones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, we, we are uh, set up as managers of the service and we can create accounts and uh, we are nowhere near our limit. Nowhere near. So if somebody wants an instructor account. Awesome. I, I want an instructor account yeah, because I go. don't normally use Blackboard for them. Uh -huh. I use okay. that, so. so, right. I was just thinking in terms of we've got a lot of people that are using it with Blackboard. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's a very easy way. Through, if you click through and you already have an account, then it's going to tie your existing account to ours. 
If you don't have an account, it's going to ask you to make one if you're clicking through Blackboard. Right. If you're not using this with Blackboard, then you should ask us. Perfect. Because we have to do a few steps. You, you have to do the background part <laughs> that Blackboard is do. doing. We do. Blackboard is doing the background part right Got here. It. Okay. So again, this is the connection through Blackboard is automatically tying your account. <laughs> um, but yeah. Because there are there are folks who you know for whatever the reasons don't use Blackboard to teach their their classes. Right, I use WordPress for most everything. Right, um, but I am using this inside of Blackboard because of the excellent. I like Blackboard's great book right. and the LTI link within VoiceThread creates that grading column oh, for me. Creates the assignments and the, yeah. Yes. That, that is a nice feature of Blackboard, yes. to say the least. Um, so, and I never have my students, even though I use WordPress for almost everything with the class, I never have my students submit their work anywhere except for inside of Blackboard, because it all keeps it contained for me. Sure. Um, by the way, this voice thread is really, really tightly um, integrated with and connected to another LMS, too. So if you use Canvas, I believe mm. it is. Yep. Uh, it's going to be seamless. It's going to work very similarly. Okay, so if you have, if you're a student with a free account, then as soon as you connect, it's going to do account verification, um, and I put in a link to some more information there and how to video, how to create a voice thread. Um, so if you need specifics on how to make one, I was going to make a short one. But um, this particular video from VoiceSet themselves, right at 143, not just shows you how to make the voice thread, but how to share it. Because one of the nice strengths and one of the things we want our students to do, if we have them doing assessments, if we have them um, working with other students, either group work or they're making a voice thread in response to one of your assignments, you know, show me, do a miniature lecture on, um, then they're going to need to know how to share it so that it's not just private to right. them. Right. Um, Blackboard creates a cohort for your class and they can share it with just your class. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So um, it's, it's knowing how to do it with groups. Okay. So we're just slightly behind my schedule, not, not far. Yeah, got time. Yeah, got we got plenty of time. Um, so, talking about how to use VoiceThread for assessments, I wanted to press upon people the concept that getting your students doing active learning is going to engage them mm -hmm. with the content more. Um, so, you may want to use VoiceThread for assessments. Um, I'll come back to bad things that people do <laughs> with VoiceThread. Uh, I will cover, though, right before I talk about you using it for assessments in your class, it's going to be important, your role as an instructor is that you do cleanup. So if you have students working with VoiceThread, either you've created the VoiceThreads and they're responding and they're working together, talking to each other, um, you got to do a little moderation. That means you're going to watch, you're going to listen, you're going to go and look at these voice threads. And if students have um, included photos or images that are inappropriate or not on topic, mm -hmm. you know, I love the uh, animated GIFs of the cats, you know, like making right. the toilet right. yeah, flush. That's, you know, not appropriate to the class. So you may have to clean out some silliness or unfinished if a student starts something and then they stop for whatever reason you could send them an email and ask them to do another okay i noticed you were in that lets them know you're paying attention and uh, but it stopped there's right. lots of reasons why it might stop right technical failure <laughs> um but make sure your students are providing meaningful commentary and you know so you you do have some moderation tasks that you need to do um Hmm. Before assessments, uh, yeah, I have like, okay, only one more slide before assessments. 
VoiceThread allows you to use your own materials, but they've also connected in, and I'm not sure if you've seen this. This was no, new. This, this is this is nice. This was new to me in the last couple of years. Um, you can use VoiceThread's media sources, which means you can pull in information from your own account on VoiceThread. You can pull in information from Khan Academy, so mm -hmm. one of their videos. You can pl pull in any images you want from Flickr's, uh, you know, Commons, Wikimedia Commons, mm -hmm. or Flickr Media Commons, but then also from the New York Public Library. Um, so it's and so if you're doing, say, looking at uh, <clears throat> artwork at the Metropolitan Museum, mm -hmm. and you can pull in those images and get mm -hmm. the students to leave comments mm -hmm. about. Probably. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. You know, that, ask ask nice deeper feature. questions and get them involved. Um, so, of course, lectures and notes. You can use VoiceThread for lecturettes and discussions with your students. Don't just use it to talk out to them. Sure. Uh, the strength is the back and forth. But um, there's several different assessment types that you can use inside of VoiceThread. And there's different ways you can create assessments with VoiceThread. Um, here's some information. VoiceThread has a certified educator training uh, series that they're doing. And it's about a two week program. It's, it's really only two modules, but it takes you about two weeks to do. Um, and one of the things that they really, really encourage is that you giving them meaningful feedback and them communicating connects them into an assignment in a different way. Okay, so besides the objectives of your assignment, you're also encouraging your students, you know, to talk, to maybe um, simulate uh, some information from what they've read from your lecture, synthesize it, if you will, and then share it out to other students. And that's that's deeper. That's asking them to do more than just read and respond to some questions. Um, by using VoiceThread, you might be doing more with your original assessment, as in you're building more. And you don't have to, they say, you don't have to devise another lesson. Ah. Um, VoiceThread allows for your students to create presentations. A lot of times people ask, I'm an instructional designer, and they ask, how can I get my students doing presentations for communication classes, etc.? cetera? Um, you know, science lab, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Where yeah. they have to talk about something. Yeah. And you could have your group or your science lab or your partner or whatever, here's our data, this is what we came up with, and then have the other students be able to watch it and see, you know, oh, so not everybody had to do that lab. Um, if they are using it, they're using their voice, they can use video graphics, but then there's also another tool where they can draw right on top of it. Um, so it's good for all sorts of things. Yeah. So I would say math. Great tool demonstrating proficiency. Uh -huh. That's true, that's true, because having them build and show, build and show. Um, okay, so whether you're using this for a face-to-face -face class or an online class, it allows you to do things sort of outside of the classroom. And it allows the student to just connect whenever they want to. And it allows you to give your feedback whenever you want to. Okay, so it's, it's asynchronicity, you know, which most right. online tools are, right? We're, they're not synchronous. Uh, allows the student to do their work when they want to, and it allows you to do your feedback, but it also allows for a student to watch it over and over and over again. Right. And they can ask you a follow-up question. So don't be surprised if your email um, gives you notifications after you've given food feedback to the student, uh, they might come back and ask you a question, a follow-up question on your feedback. Uh, Naomi is not here yet. She's going to do the using the mashup tool. So is there a time limit for responses? Say you've put something out there and you're expecting students to respond. You know, I mean, you obviously don't want them talking for an hour. Oh, right. But, you know, is there is there a, a limiting aspect to their response to the response aspect of things? Uh, well, you should 
model it for them and you should explain it to them. Right. Anything longer than a minute um, is just way too long. Right. And that's true for video or audio. And this is good for an instructor to know. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. You yeah. don't want to make something that's too long because your students are going to lose interest. Uh, as well. Absolutely. Well, and you will too if you're having to listen to 10 minute responses, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, um, so shorter is better. And the, these are some ineffective things from bad, bad voice threads that have been created. Um, if you're using bad images or too much text, too small, this is probably kind of small for some people to read on the screen. I didn't, I didn't right. double check and see. Yeah, it's not that bad. But this is a lot of text on this screen. So your yeah. students really shouldn't either use too much text, too much audio, too long, too long a video. Um, this does bring up the point, though, that you have to model anything you want your students to do. Don't do a five minute video and not expect, even in your five minute video, you mm -hmm. telling the students, well, I only want you to give me one minute responses. No, your video was five minutes. So right. you're going to get like a two minute response or something like that. Yeah. Uh, model what you want the student to do. I actually tested this last summer by making just some slides and not a lot of audio or video. And what my students chose to do, my slides had way too much text and I didn't have too much in terms of video or audio. Right. And what I got back was exactly the same. They're like, oh, that must be what she wants. But in other voice threads where I only had just a few words on the screen and then it was a video of me explaining what I wanted them to do, they came back with video or audio. Right. So That's modeling really does yeah. work. Yeah. I like messing around that way, though. OK. We'll jump back um, when Naomi is here showing the mashup tool. We'll go forward just a little bit um, to some of the best things I've seen. I went through the VoiceThread certified training. I haven't finished my capstone project yet. I'm still working on it. But during that training, some of the best things I saw and I was just excited about was students practicing language skills. Oh, yeah. And we actually have Ron, I want to say Brower, could be Bauer, who is teaching an Inupiat, Inupiat, Inupiat class, language class. And he's actually speaking to the students. True. And he's using VoiceThread to do this. Um, one of the examples that I saw when I went through the training was an instructor who was using English for not first time, you know, English learners. I mean, it was English learners, not native English speakers. Um, and she would ask questions verbally. And then what the students had to do was get on and practice their English oh, sure. by giving a response. Giving a response to it. Yeah, absolutely. And then the students were also kind of giving each other feedback about, well, how they might have said it. Well, that was even more English they were practicing. Sure. So that's Absolutely. pretty cool. Um, you can use VoiceThread for group projects where individuals are making their own slides yeah. for whatever the assignment is. And then um, because you can doodle, et cetera, on it, you can use it like a whiteboard that records. Nice. Yeah, it's just some different thoughts for whoever thinks, you know, well, I don't know. Why would I use VoiceThread in their class? Exactly. Um, recent modifications. Well, first of all, a couple of years ago when you were using VoiceThread, um, it went down and around the whole screen. Mm -hmm. And Great. I will stop sharing my slides so people can uh, see us. <laughs> I know what. Um, so when when we were using VoiceThread, all right. the comments it always tracked around it. It yeah. tracked all the way around it. Well, now it's just going to go in a long, long line on the left hand side, but it allows for threading. If you, the instructor, want students to be able to respond just to each other's comments, then you turn on threading. Oh, nice. nice. Um, so the students can comment back to each other. Mm. It's kind of cool. And um, there's also some other things where you can do searching to find comments. 
um, that That's a student nice has stuff. made, right? It's got to be by that person's name. So um, there's also YouTube imports. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even though only four things I showed you in that previous slide, mm -hmm. um, like Khan Academy right. and Flickr, New York Library, and right, New York Library, you can just go and find the URL for a YouTube you want to be shown, push it in, and then students can comment on it and they can doodle on top of it. So that's a little bit more like the um, whiteboard mm -hmm. concept. And then let's see. I'm going to turn this back on, share this. Okay, um, I've taken just a few steps and I'm going to go ahead and do it so people see exactly what I'm doing. Inside a Blackboard, in the class I'm working in, inside of the folder where I want them to do their work, so submit homework. I would create a voice thread and then follow the link. When I follow the link, it's going to launch the LTI. And then the very first time you're making it, you have to decide how um, you're setting it up. Course view means that you're going to see all of the threads that are made and attached to that oh, course. That class. I uh -huh. So you might, um, this if you're doing mini lectures versus the assessment aspect, you create your different lectures and you can have them all in there. Now you'll notice that these say X1, S, E, M2, those are all assignments. Um, so I could link in and show, but I'm not going to save it. Hey, Naomi. Hey. Um, I could link in and show that one. Or to just an individual voice thread. And then you have to go and select it and then share it with the whole class. Okay, let me do that again because I couldn't read that. Trying to define a resource link that is already there. Right, because I have a connection into this one already. So, hey, hi, Naomi. Sorry, I'm so late. That's oh, that's okay. okay. You want to cover good. this part? Because I am sure you're going to do a better job of this part than me. Oh, it looks perfect like you already timeline. got it done. No, not quite. No, she was just she was just showing inside. <laughs> oh, you didn't actually link to it from Blackboard. Well, I was pulling a link in, but since I was choosing the same one, I wasn't quite doing it. So, oh, how about you, Naomi? I'm gonna pop out. How do you want to get in and do this? Um, because it's being recorded. Okay. <laughs> For posterity. Okay, I'm. I can just log into a course and just add Sounds a link, good. and that's all that I need to demonstrate, right? Yep. Okay. And then we'll talk about discussion, best practices, and a few more things that's coming in VoiceThread, and we'll be done. Should we zoom back out, Gary, or no? So as far as Blackboard integrating with VoiceThread, you would just go to where you want to deploy that link for students or yourself. Go to Build Content and click the VoiceThread mashup. Give it a name. You can enable grading for that. Which would automatically create the columns then. Yes. But we'll, it's, so it's the same grading options as for any other assignment. Okay. And there it is. And that's as easy as it is. You just click on it and it basically takes you out of Blackboard and into VoiceThread. And students, would, students don't need to do anything. They just see the link to the assignment. They see the link to VoiceThread, right. which takes them, takes them into then, here. Then to this. Yeah. 
And so from there, it's- And if, if the student, if the instructor hasn't used VoiceThread before? When they go to set up the link, they'll be asked to create an account. Okay. And that happens right there in Blackboard as well. Well, it happens, it, in, it ha voice happens in voice Yeah. And or they can go to voice thread externally and do that before they connect it to their Blackboard. Do students need an account as well? Yes. So they go through you the same process. You can speak more to that because uh, mm -hmm. there is an e-learning account. Yep. We, we're going to hit that again. We covered a little bit. Um, as soon as students follow the link that Naomi just showed you how to make, if they don't have an account, it's going to ask them to set up an account. Correct. And that will automatically connect them to the institutional account that we have. Mm -hmm. That means that they wouldn't just have the five free right. voice threads, but they could make many, many more. Okay. So really the advantage of uh, you want to make sure and tell your classes that, by the way, just go through and register there. Don't register externally or because of the advantage of having 50 and so But if, even if they have an external one where they've already made it, right. as soon as they follow through this link, it's going to connect them. So they'll be, in a sense, upgraded automatically. Okay. So but they, they won't necessarily know that they were. It, except for it does give a prompt. It does say that mm -hmm. it's... Um, have it in one of the slides. Can I have this box? Yeah, so it's with you. Okay. Is your next meeting at one? It is. Okay. Downstairs? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be I'm in that meeting with you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Not a problem. Thanks. Okay. I'll be in that meeting with you too. So go back and share my slides. Okay, so Gary, the question you asked, it asks for account verification. Okay. So if they already have one, once they click through Blackboard to get to the assignment or the lecture that you're providing, it's going to ask them to sign in or make, you know, right then. And it'll say account verification and it'll be connecting them to the new institutional one. Okay, so just a little bit more discussing what's coming up. Okay, focus is really So this month, commenters will be able to add slides without other permission. And what on earth does that mean? Um, when you create voice threads, you are um, only, you can make them private, you can make them public. Right. Uh, the individuals that, like your students, that follow the link, or watch the voice thread and have the ability to comment on it. Well, commenters can't delete things. Commenters can't um, like delete your whole voice thread, etc. They also, they, they don't have the same permissions as if, if they were making it. So a comment, but a commenter is still, so you could set something up and all you want is comments. Mm -hmm. So you could have all the participants in that cohort or whatever yep. group just be. Just to comment. Just as, a, as yep. commenters. Yep. Um, so the commenters now, next, eh, I don't know, 10 days? Yeah, today, no, today's the 20th, eight days. Um, what voice is going to change is that commenters will be able to add slides. So they'll be able to add some comment, some content, not just comments. Oh, interesting. Um, but it's not going to, you can follow this link to learn what that, how that's going to be done but it's not going to mean that your commenters can delete things. So they're adding some more permission. Um, if you really want your students to create things though, mm -hmm. you should probably just have them, you know, create, create that LTI right. link. And if you're working in Blackboard and have them make things. Nice. Um, but you could have a group of students working together and they can add their own slides. That's a very sensitive mouse. I touch it. Yeah. I move forward. Coming soon, 
uh, in addition to the connection that's there already with VoiceThread to Wikimedia Commons, YouTube, uh, etc., you can connect Google Drive and Kaltura. Nice. So um, if you're really curious where VoiceThread is headed, I think they're trying to make some major changes. Some inroads there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so, do you want to see some of the the new changes, or yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be that'd be fun to see. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna go into one of them. Oh, I'm signed in as Naomi. I think. Okay. Okay, so this um, brings up the point. I didn't uh, go through the student view so that we can see what the student sees, but as soon as I finished setting up the connection, I chose a specific voice thread to show, mm -hmm. and then I followed the link again. It told me that I needed Flash Player, and that is true. Um, you might think, well, why isn't voice thread using HTML5? Um, and they are making a lot of changes. Right. They are, um, I want to say about half of their content is being built differently, but some of their older content isn't. Um, I was just reading on, I, I have a real interest in, right. you know, I think Flash is dead, yeah. right? Well, um, <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm surprised looking at that going, you really, Flash really? player, seriously. Yeah, well, I could um, share some information that I was just reading yesterday where they're doing the conversion. They are making right. the conversion, right. but they haven't converted everything. So you may have to have Flash player. Um, let me go in. This is Safari. I'm going to go back to Chrome. Make sure that I share Chrome and see whether or not it does the same thing for me. So I'm popping. Yeah, cancel. Pop Naomi out of there. Oh, yeah, because this is Safari, then it would still do it. So, folks, I know we've got this recording and you can't see this part yet. I'm pretty big on live stuff. <laughs> Is it Alaska? That's the new one, right? That'll be the new one. Yeah. share this in just a moment. Let me go to the student view. Which means if if it needs a uh, flash on this one, you'll see it too. I'm in the student view. I'm going to go to um, submit homework. And you'll see where I had some students working on materials, etc. And how the comments work. I need to sign in. So that is demonstrating the first time you go in and you're not logged in. Okay, so now I could look at the different slides by paging forward. 
and this is I'm showing you, you know, that I have video, et cetera, going on where I'm providing the student with a prompt. Right. And when I hover over, actually, I think that's not the video. You'll see, you'll see me show up. In this one, I guess I don't have video. Ah, bad modeling. But when I hover over, I can um, thread a comment. So if I click on it and then I click thread, notice it created a new one mm -hmm. just attached to me. And so it's even telling me here with the yellow reply in the thread. So that's the threaded discussion. And as nice. soon as I as soon as I choose one of these things, it'll ask me to, you know, like give permission sure so i'm i'm gonna skip out of that i'll say allow but i'm not actually going to record anything on top of this one so stop recording you know draw over the top of it etc cetera, etc cetera. so i'm not going to add one in there but here we have just a portion of it and then you can see that this is going to go on a scroll mm -hmm. up and down um, other things that a student could do, or you as the instructor could do, is, oh, there is my video. Okay, so I clicked on it and there's my video. Um, but I could just provide text response, and it flows all the way to the bottom. And in addition to the video, I could do audio, or this is the phone in. And the phone in is fun. Now you guys all know my phone number. Oh, that's horrible. Don't call. <laughs> okay. So it's it's still asking. oldest at the top, youngest at the bottom in terms of responses. Yes, but you can unless it's threaded. I'm pretty sure you can flip that. So um, unless it's threaded, in which case the threads come right. off of it. So they they are doing some new different types of things with how you can get your students communicating. Nice. I know, I know, pretty exciting. And cool, I had cool. a link in there also where students could follow the link to learn more. Exit this preview. And let's see, one more time. Back to the slides. Where are my slides? Oh, because you probably closed Safari, right? So. Mm. I did. I closed my slides. It's okay. The last thing was questions, answers, <laughs> next steps. Well, the only question is, when are you going to start using it, right? Uh, when faculty? are you going to start using that's it? Right. The faculty, that's right. What do you, I love that. That sounds smart. Um, also, again, if you want more information, you can talk to me, Janine McMahon. You can talk to Gary. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Naomi. Yeah. Uh, and if you need an account created that's connected um, to the 50 possible voice thread that you can make, because of the institutional account we have, you can talk to Kristen Buffard or myself and we'll get in there and make that account for you. Awesome. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Well, Janine, thanks for being here today. Appreciate it. That was fun. Okay. Great.